Welcome to the Learning Lab. My name is Roman Garcia. This is Volume 8. What we're going to be discussing today is uh, human locomotion. Uh, I'm going to show you why it is that uh, people walk the way they do. And uh, you'll get a greater understanding of um, your situation when it comes to your own walking. You'll know what it is that you need to focus in on in order to be able to uh, predict if you've got a problem occurring in any of the major joints in the human body. But before, I, um, before we get into a little bit more into the topic, uh, what I want to show you is why it is that humans walk the way they do. And it's basically one general principle of why humans walk the way they do. And that principle is called the convex concave principle. Let me show you what I mean by that. It's fairly easy. And this is, and I'll show you later on on an x-ray. All human joints are constructed in this fashion. One end of the joint, this is a rough picture. One end of the joint has an end that looks like a ball when you look at it from the outside. This is convex. This is a convex surface. The other joint, in most cases, in all cases, have a scallop to it, just like this. It's almost like a lock and key. This round surface fits into this scallop surface. This is a concave. Concave. This is as technical as we're going to get. All joints have a convex and concave surface. Now, what this does, it creates rotation in all the joints in the human body. So in essence, what a human or a, an individual, when we walk, what we're literally doing is we're rotating. What rotation does, it, it, it creates efficiency in moving from point A to point B. So the designer of the human body designed with one intent to create efficiency and the greatest efficiency that you can create in a structure that moves along a surface is through rotation is like a ball a ball rolls a human rolls now let me show you a little bit what would happen when you lose rotation in one of your major joints of the body in essence, you'll walk something like this. This is a little robot. This will give us an illustration of what somebody who's lost rotation in one of the major joints in the body, how they would walk. And we've all seen, seen people limping. Limping is a form of somebody who's lost rotation in one of their major joints. It could be the hip, the knee, the ankle. But they will walk like this. If we were not to have rotation in our joints, if we were not to have this type of surface, we would walk like this. Very inefficient. This system right here, there is no rotation in these mechanical limbs. You see how hard and rigid this robot walks. In essence, this is walking without rotation in the joints. You can see it's a very rigid, very en high energy expenditure mechanism of walking. There is no rotation. The designer of the human body designed us to be a lot more efficient. And the only way that that designer was able to do it was to create joints that have this structure. Convex with concave. This creates rotation. Rotation in the joints. Rotation in the joints, which creates movement forward. This is a simple demonstration or a simple illustration, but I think you get the idea. The key to walking normal is in rotation of the joints. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you uh, uh, how a normal rotating body walks. And I'll show you and I'll, and I'll demonstrate and I'll, I'll let you zoom in 
on some of the technical aspects of that rotation. So you allow me, let me get my model, Anna, so she can show you what a normal rotating joint and how when all the joints are working in, in equilibrium, how that walking is fluidly performed. So if you allow me, let's go over here and I'll show you, give you a uh, demonstration with my model, Anna. Now, this is what Anna's going to do. She's going to stand right over here and she's going to walk to the door and then she's going to walk back. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you, I'll demonstrate, I'll try for you to focus in where most of that rotation is occurring and what allows Anna to walk so smoothly. And if you lose this rotation in the joints, you will walk just like that mechanical robot did earlier. So what Anna's going to do now is she's going to walk to the door and walk back. Go ahead, Anna, please. Now, observe her walking. Very different than the robot. It's nice and smooth. She glides over the surface. Anna, do it one more time, please. She's gliding right over the surface. Observe the pelvis. It doesn't seem like it is, but she's rotating at the pelvis. Now, Anna, she's going to come over here, and she's going to lay on her stomach. Now, if you allow me, this will make you more comfortable. Now, you saw how she was walking. You really didn't see rotation. What you saw was the pelvis moving up and down. It was tilting. Now, that tilting is a byproduct of rotation that was occurring in decreased order from the pelvis down to her ankle. Now, where you, in the joint that you would see an individual lose that nice, fluid, gliding motion over the surface is when an individual loses rotation in the hip. This is where the majority of the rotation occurs, which allows a human being to walk smoothly, effortlessly over the surface. Now, we've gone through this in one of the volumes before, where we demonstrated what the um, uh, biomechanical for a healthy hip, what it would be. Now, the reason that Anna can walk smoothly over the surface is simply because of this. this rotation in the hip this rotation in the hip this is the key this is the key if an individual loses this ability to rotate at the hip inward and outward or actually external rotation and internal rotation Anna would walk like that robotic mechanical robot that we use as an example when you lose rotation in the joints. Now, all the joints in the human body from the base of the skull to the palms of the feet, all the joints are structured with that convex, convex surf, concave surface on the bottom and a convex surface on the top, creating this rotation in different planes depending on the function required of the joint itself. But all joints in the human body have that structure to it because rotation is the key to locomotion, going from point A to point B very efficiently. Again, Whereas in the hip, this is the most important area where that rotation occurs. Again, you can see, Anna has normal rotation in the hips. And if we were to examine the joints, we were to examine the knee joint, we were to examine the ankle joint, the midfoot, the forefoot joint, we would see that Anna's joints are healthy and they all are able to rotate as they should. And I have examined her knee joint and I have examined her, her ankle and her feet. And I do know that Anna has very healthy joints. Again, allowing this rotation to occur and allowing her to move effortlessly through the surface. 
Now, what I want to do is I want to show you examples on an x-ray and on this convex, concave general principle of human joints. So if you allow me, let's come over here and I'll show you. Do you want to turn off the light maybe? Or do you think this is fine? I think we turn off the light will be better. Now, let's start off with this x-ray. This is an x-ray of a cervical or a neck of, a, of an individual. Now look at this, how interesting. We see even in a joint as small as the joints in the neck, you still see this concave, concave general principle. You see it right here. This joint, this, this bone surface right here, this is concave surface. These are the joints right here. And again, you can see that. You can see it concave, convex, concave, convex. And again, it goes all the way down into the lower cervical spine. This is a picture of a, of a relatively healthy human uh, cervical region. And again, it doesn't violate the convex, concave surface. Even in small joints, you still see that general principle demonstrated in the joints itself. Obviously, we turn our head, we, we move our heads forward, backwards, but especially the head, the neck is designed to, to, to create rotation on the, in the head region. So, rotation is very important for, obviously, for the head, for us to see side to side. Again, you see the general principle here. Con concave, convex surface. Let me show you a different joint. This is the elbow. Again, you see that general principle, that structural general principle, creating that rotation function. You see the concave. You see a concave surface. You see a convex surface. You see a concave surface. Concave surface. Convex surface. You see, this is the, this is the, the actual, the bone that makes up your shoulder, this is the end right over here. You can see it, it's right over here. So basically we're looking at an elbow from the side, from this view right over here. You can see very clearly, again, that general principle. You see, this is the, a shot of the same elbow, but now it's from the front. You see that general principle. Concave, convex, concave, convex, convex, concave again it's all about creating rotation rotation is how the human body interacts with this environment it makes a human body efficient now let me show you this ex this x-ray this is an x-ray of a hip again you see that general principle this is not a normal hip by far but it's close to normal but you do see that principle, especially in the hip. You see this large femoral head. This is the hip joint right here. You see that large head right here. You can see how nice and round it is, very convex. It attaches or it makes contact with, the, with in essence, with the pelvis. You see this surface right here, very concave. It's like this. It's just like this. That's where the majority of the rotation occurs. As soon as an individual starts losing this, this symmetrical, circular, convex pattern with this nice, symmetrical, concave pattern in the hip, they'll lose that rotation. If they lose that rotation, they'll start walking just like that robot does. Very rigid, very inefficient, and very painful. So, I think we can turn on the lights. So, again, um, what we see is that the human body, the designer of the human body, designed it in a way to create maximum efficiency. And it appears that all the joints follow the same general principle, which is a convex on a concave surface. And the function that we get from that is rotation. It's just like a rolling ball. So I, I think what we need to grasp from this video and the, the lesson to learn from this video is, is that you yourself, you can evaluate yourself and start to maybe even predict maybe future problems in, in the future 
by doing a simple maneuver, which you can do yourself. And this is what I recommend. Every now and then, lay on your stomach. Bend your knee 90 degrees, just like this. And very simply, just do this. Bring your foot in. Pay attention to your pelvis. You do not want your pelvis to rise up from the surface. Then bring your leg or your foot and bring it out this way. Again, it should be a smooth transition from here to here. You should not get much movement here at the pelvis. You can do it yourself. Now, if one day you start performing this maneuver and when you bring your foot in, you notice that your pelvis rises up from the surface. What that is telling you is, is that you're starting to develop some, possibly, some serious degenerative changes in your pelvis and you should definitely have somebody competent look into the situation because what you do not want to do is you do not want to lose this rotation in the pelvis or else your walking as you get older will become much more difficult to do and something that you've taken for granted for many many years will start to become extremely difficult and energy consuming for you to perform so I think the, the takeaway from today is, is that the human body follows these general principles of efficiencies, of which in the human body, it follows the convex, concave general principle of efficiency. And you yourself at home can perform this simple maneuver to diagnose or to give you an idea of something, something very seriously forming inside your pelvis and give you ample time to find a solution for this rotation issue because without rotation efficient walking is impossible for for anybody that sees this video i want to thank you again um, if you have any comments about any videos we've done in the class feel free to give us a give us a ring on on youtube and as always we're here to try to in create insightful information for the public at large. Thank you for watching this video.